Good morning, my friends. Welcome to Angie Wright Art Studio. Uh, today, I am going to be checking out the Windsor Newton watercolor sticks. They're professional range, and I'm really excited about checking these out. I've been waiting for them. I ordered them off Amazon. Uh, the cost in Canadian dollars was approximately approximately $70 plus tax. This is how they look when they come. This was around them. I did open them. However, I haven't tried them yet. So when I opened them, this is what they look like. They are, as you can see, two and a half inch sticks. So they're just itty bitty. And if you want to read the pigment information on them, I suggest getting a magnifying glass because they're really small. That's what I had to use anyway, because I'm kind of blind. And I used this to pop them out. Now, I've never used Winsor Newton watercolors. Uh, I'm a whole biner, and I like Daniel Smith. But I have this one tube of quinacridone magenta, and I really liked it. So I thought, well, let's give these a try, and we'll see, because you always hear so much about Winsor Newton. Um, so I wanted to, I made a chart. I wrote down all the information for it. For anybody who's new to watercolor, I wrote down the information that I was looking for was the permanency and light fast rating information. Um, for me, because I sell my artwork, that's the most important thing when I'm looking at what paints I'm going to use. Um, these can be used as a stick or they can also be used uh, directly with a brush and water and just like a watercolor paint. So. Without further ado, I'll let you know what colors are in this particular set. Uh, this one here is Windsor Yellow. This is Cad Yellow Hue, which they choose a hue because it's less expensive than using a cadmium pigment. This is Cad Red Hue, Alizarin Crimson, French Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Windsor Green Blue, which I've never used this color. I'm thinking this is a Viridian. Um, or a turquoise, one of the two. Uh, yellow ochre, burnt umber, and ivory black. I'm really excited to swatch these out uh, and talk about these. So, uh, this one here is the Windsor Yellow. Um, this one is made with, it's PY154. For those of you who are new, pigment yellow 154. Those little square, that means that it is semi-transparent it's a series one color, which the series number indicates how much it costs the company and how expensive the pigment is to make. So this is a, a normal, a normal pigment it doesn't cost them too, too much. Um, the permanency rating is A, which means permanent, and the light fast rating of one, which, um, which means uh, according to Windsor Newton's website. A rated in full strength may fade in light washes. So as long as you're using this in full strength, this shouldn't fade over time. Um, so it's a it's got a good it's got a good rating. Um, so let's take a look at this and see what it looks like. It almost feels like a crayon and I didn't use these before I turned on the video camera so this is my first time using them so I'm just just pressing lightly I want to press dark for me I'm just using it on the uh, Canson Excel watercolor paper which is what I use for swatching for my professional work I use Hanamool uh, Bockingford and which is a cellulose paper but it is archival it's made with felted it's a felted paper okay that's pretty interesting now I did watch a few reviews on this product and the reviews said that it can be hard to scrub out the granulation from them or the the uh, it can be hard to to liquefy them so I'm using a synthetic brush rather than any of my good watercolor brushes. I'm going to leave the top part. I think I'm going to leave the top part in for that. Let's see. I'm just squeezing a little, trying to get some water out. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Okay. Okay, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna put it in wet. Okay, so there we can get some heavier pigment on there. Okay, I'm liking that. I am liking that and thinking I can have some fun with that. This is a pale color. But I mean, I'm on a funny angle, so I'm not pressing very hard because I'm recording. I really like that. All right, I'm just going to wipe this little pen off. Let's try number two. Number two is cadmium yellow hue. It is a semi-transparent color. It's made with two different yellows, PY65, which is like um, in Daniel Smith's range, PY65 is Hansa Yellow Deep. And it's also made with PY97. I'd have to check my other colors to see if I have anything else with that pigment. And PY6, which is white. Which, when I wrote down the white, I was thinking, oh, yeah, okay. You know, I don't always like white in my colors. If I want white in my colors, I'll add, like, I would like to be able to have that control and add the white to my colors. But I understand. So this particular color is a Series 1 color. It's got a permanency rating of A, which means that it's permanent, and a light fast rating of 2. A light fast rating of two means that it cannot be relied upon to withstand damp conditions. So for some reason, this pigment reacts with damp conditions. Let's see what it looks like. But I mean, if it's in a frame and it's in your house, chances are your conditions aren't going to be damp. I want to press on it really hard right here. I'm gonna break it. So I'm really liking it. I like that. Okay, let's try it with water. I'm excited. Yeah, let's start up here. Get a little water going. I really like the Hansa Yellow Deep. Um, I have Daniel Smith sticks on their way coming, and I can't wait to compare these two to see the difference between them. Ooh, I like that color. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the yellow deep. Let me just see it fade out. Yeah, I like that. It's it's yellow, but with like a kiss of orange, almost like sunlight. I'm just gonna clean the brush. Let's see, I like the way that turns out. I think I can do some nice artworks with that. All right, the next color, let me just move this. Next color we have is Cad Red Hue. Now, Cadmium Red, the hue is made with PR pigment, for those of you who are new, Pigment Red 255. And it's a translucent color, which is what I prefer. I like having a translucent watercolor palette. Uh, I'm gonna move this to here. Hopefully you can still see it. Oh, and I have this because this was my little magenta paint tube that I had. Um, and I've really enjoyed the magenta. So I'm hoping that I enjoy these as much. Uh, it's a series one color, which means that um, it's, it's not too expensive to make. A permanency rating of A and a light fast rating of one. So that's a good light fast rating. Let's take a look at this one. Now I want to see if I can go, I want to go heavy on the color here, see what kind of pigmentation I can get. Okay, let's try that. Okay, it's almost right now, because in the lighter areas, it's almost like an orangey red, which I was expecting. I do like it. it. Seems to melt really easily with the water. 
which is what I was hoping. Whoops. Forgive me. This is a hard angle to, to be able to paint on. All right. Well, let's see what it looks like. If you put the pigment directly in the water, it's really, it, it gets very vibrant. It releases a lot of the pigment, which I like. These are interesting. And I'm really scrubbing at the paper. So I'm using, that's why I'm using this synthetic brush. I'm not using my good watercolor brushes on it. Let's see if we can get that to dissolve a little more because it's really showing marks. I think it's because I pushed really hard there when I went back into the, the watery area. Overall, it's a nice color. It's like a reddish orange. Let me clean my brush. All right. Now, the next color... This was one of the few colors that I was a little disappointed about with this set. And I'll explain that to you. This color is Alizarin Crimson. It's made of Pigment Red 83. It's a transparent color. It's a Series 1 color. Permanency rating of B, which B is, I wrote them down right here, B is moderately durable. Um, this color is not moderately durable. I consider this color a fugitive color. Now, what surprises me is because this little set, this little set right here, okay, it's a beautiful little set, but it's specifically Winsor Newton Professional Watercolor. Now, I realize Alizarin Crimson PR83 is a professional pigment. However, most professionals that use a non-light fast pigment, and uh, I consider this a fugitive pigment, which means that it will fade and it will, which is why there's no light fast rating on it. It's a series one permanent CB. It's not moder moderately durable. This will fade. There's no question about it. Um, but the reason why I really question it is because they do have a permanent alizarin crimson, which is made up of two different pigments, which to mimic this particular color, the PR83. If you're a watercolorist, you're aware of the Hands website. I use Hands as uh, a really great resource. It's an amazing website. It will it has listings of what pigments are fugitive, what pigments fade. This is one of the huge ones. So I usually with this color, I avoid this color in all my work. Um, people, professionals who can use this color, are illustrative artists. Um, people who people who are doing, uh, using watercolors for marketing, things that are going to be scanned. So it's not something where the color has to remain intact and perfect and in gallery standards where it doesn't fade. But that's just my personal opinion. In regards to this particular color, I am going to write Winsor Newton's website and give them my opinion on that and let them know that I am disappointed. I don't necessarily believe that will have any result, but I can say from my personal experience of contacting different companies, for instance, Holbein, when I contacted Holbein, they were polite and professional. They answered all of my questions regarding their light fastness. I was so impressed. So maybe we'll see if Windsor Newton will do the same thing because I just, I just don't understand. I'm sorry, I have to rant about this for a minute. I just don't understand. I don't understand why they would put in this color when there's a perfectly good substitute for it. And they know that it's not a permanent color. I just, I get emails from Windsor Newton um, and you know, you sign up for different websites, you get notifications. In the emails that I got, um, the, the email that I had just this week was in regards to PR83 and the difference between permanent alizarin crimson and alizarin crimson. So, Given that they know that, 
I don't understand why they would put this in a professional range of products. This should be something that should be an opt-in, like the color Opera, which is also fugitive. You should, you should be able to buy this if you want the original pigment and you know that you're going to scan your work because the scans, when it prints on this, when it, when you scan it and then you have it printed, those colors are permanent. So anyway, rant done. <laughs> Let's see how this color turns out. And I'm just kind of scribbling. It feels like using a crayon. Or at least that's how it feels to me. Let me just, I want to color it all the way down. I want to see if I can get some really good heavy pigment right in here. There we go. All right, let's see how this one turned out. So just so you guys know, for if you're new to watercolor, watch out for that. It's PR83. It is not a permanent color. And if you do a nice artwork, even if you're just doing it for family or whatever, you do a really nice painting. Say you work on that painting for a week and you're really proud of it. It's one of the best paintings that you feel you've ever done. And you give it to say your mom or your sister or whoever. And then in two years, the painting doesn't look so good because the PR 83 is faded out. And I don't know. I just, there's so many other options, like Quinn Red is a great option, there's there's Pyrrole Red, uh, Maroon, Perline, um, there's really nice options out there now for watercolors that you really don't have to go with a, an alizarin, uh, alizarin Crimson Fugitive Pigment. So just my professional opinion. And it is a lovely color. I do love alizarin crimson. I love the way that it mixes. It has beautiful mixes when you mix it with blues. Um, you get really pretty violets, but I don't know. I just, to me, that's just not a smart decision. It's not a smart business decision. Let's see how it goes in a little bit of water. Ooh, that's vibrant. I like that. Put that like that. just a nice cool tone red to have in your palette so it's just too bad that they didn't they didn't do it the other way because then I could use it too the next color that we have is French ultramarine now I'm not really too sure I've watched a couple of different videos watching videos on French ultramarine and versus ultramarine I can't really tell the difference. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two. They're both made with PB29, which is an ultramarine pigment. Um, and I'm glad that most of these, like most are single pigment mixtures that they've used, which is preferred because the less pigments you have in something, the more, um, when you mix it with another color, the more clean your mixtures are. So for this particular color, this one is PB29, it's series two, so it's a little bit more expensive for this particular pigment. And uh, it's a permanency rating of A and a light fast rating of one, which is good. Most ultramarines are very, very light fast. Let's take a look. I'm just using the side of it. You can, you can draw like this. You can use a corner. Let's take a look at these. Melts nice. Ultramarine blue is normally a granulating color, which I love. When I first started watercoloring, I didn't really like granulation I didn't understand it um, but as you as you go you learn to appreciate watercolors that do that I liked as I as I started creating more and more pieces I realized how much I loved the granulating properties um,
why I think I gravitated to the Daniel Smith range and the uh, I love the Prime Attack range. Um, now I specifically look for those granulating properties uh, in my watercolors because it'll show you like hints of one color, hints of another color. It's very beautiful. All right, so that is ultramarine blue, which it's pretty. I like it. Let's take a look. Oh wait, I didn't check. Let's see if we can put it right in some water. This is just cheapo paper, so I don't really care if I'm rough on it. There's some nice pigmentation there. All right, let's check out these ones. Now. This one is Prussian Blue. Prussian Blue is made from a Series 1, it's a Series 1 pigment. It's a permanency rating of A. It's made with uh, PB, Pigment Blue 27. It's a light fast rating of 1 and it's also translucent. This one here, I always get nervous using Prussian Blue. I've seen light fast tests where Prussian blue has greatly faded and I've checked the hands website and they have stated that they believe that Prussian blue is a fugitive pigment. So I don't know because most companies put it down as being a, a permanent color. So I'm not really too sure what to believe there. So I reserve my use for this. I use this particular color and I trade it up for an indanthric, I'm going to say it wrong, indanthricone blue. Um, a dark blue. <laughs> Let's take a look at this color when it's melted down. See how pretty it is though? That's the problem. It's such a pretty color. I love it. I love how vibrant it is. Even though it's dark, it's a very vibrant blue. So pretty. I'm just kind of scribbling with my... No, I don't normally paint this way. <laughs> I've got an awkward positioning when I've got my camera on. Okay, now I just want to put some water there so I can see it do its thing. Ooh, that's nice. I love when I get ultra dark pigments or vibrant pigments. I just love color. Love, love color. I think that's why I hate seeing them fade. You know, you put, you put down these beautiful, beautiful colors and then to find out that it's going to fade in a couple years, that just breaks my heart. All right. Next is Windsor Green Blue. Now this one here, I'm very curious about. It's made with PG7. It's a series one color. It has a permanency rating of A and a light fast rating of 1. And if I didn't mention, these are the listings on the Windsor Newton website. You can get them. I searched windsornewton.com permanency rating chart um, and it came right up. So if you guys do that, it'll come right up too. Now this one here, oh I didn't write down. It's a translucent color. I think this is going to be a viridian or a turquoise. Ooh. I love testing out new products. Ooh, it's pretty. It's like a greeny, greeny turquoise. So like a phthalo green viridian. It's, it's right in there in that range. It's pretty though. I really like it. Oh, 
Let's see what it looks like in water and full strength. Come on. Starting to run out of water in this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like I like them at full full strength. They look so pretty. What I do like with these sticks is that it makes it very convenient to be able to use the stick and flick the color. So, kind of like, like this. I don't know if you can see. See, like that. And then we do this with our brushes and stuff, and that way you don't have to use your brushes to do it. And it like splatters everywhere really nice that's a beautiful color I really like it whenever I get new colors I always do one of these charts and I write out the pigments so that I'm familiar with the pigments familiar with the products that I'm using I think that that's very important at least for me it is all right now this one here this is yellow ochre and i i have to say i found this rather interesting this particular color is made of it's a series one color it's a permanency rating of aa which is top rating extremely permanent uh it's a light fast rating of one so it's very light fast most earth colors like this are very permanent the thing i find interesting with this most yellow ochres that I've used so far are only made with one pigment, PY42. This particular pigment has PR101 added into it. It's a uh, pigment red 101. And usually you see PR101 used in a lot of burnt umbers or burnt sienna. Um, so I just find it curious that they put two colors in this. I personally haven't used one with the two pigments. So let's take a look at this one. I'm assuming it'll probably be a little bit more red than just the PY42, but I could be wrong. All right, let's try that. Okay, and here's what the color looks like when it's melted and it is a pretty color but the PR 101 it does change it a bit it does make it a little bit more a little bit more dull well more more orangey almost let's see what it looks like just with where it's in its pure form Oh, did I run out of water? Nope. There. Okay, let's take a look. This is directly in some water. Ooh. I like it when we put it directly in water. Curious for me anyway, but pretty. Then we have burnt umber. We have two left. Burnt umber. This one here, another one. This this one has me a little curious. It's a series one color. It's a permanency rating of AA, so highest permanency, which is not surprising because it is an earth color. Uh, light fast rating of one. It's a translucent color. Oh, this one is also semi-translucent. Um, it's comprised of PY42, so part of this color, PR101, also this color, and PBR7, which is a uh, pigment brown 7. Um, most of the ones that I'm used to, I'm used to uh, the PR101 and the PBR7. It, I'm a little curious that it puts pigment yellow 42 in there, however... So 
let's get let's see how dark I can get this <coughs> excuse me they are a little muted compared to compared to my watercolors themselves but when I did this it immediately activated so if you wanted, if you want, these are basically, they're just watercolors, same as the tubes, but they're baked and put into a stick. Um, the binders are still the same from what I understand from the website. See, that's a pretty brown right there. I like it. It's a nice color for doing fur or background or an underpainting the grisaille method that would be a nice color to use um let's see now black i personally i don't really use black i never use it alone i will use black like for instance in my acrylics if i use black um and i'm doing a night sky i'll take my my black color and then i will add phthalo blue and magenta to my black color to make it almost like a, a black deep purple and it all looks black but then when you when you paint with it it's got that purple more of a purple tint it just gives it more depth I find a plain solid black color um, looks flat that's just my personal my personal opinion uh, their ivory black is a series one color it's a permanency rating of 8a so it's very permanent uh, light fast rating of one it's opaque which means that you can't it's not see-through uh, and PBK 9, uh, it's Pigment Black 9. This is a standard black pigment. If you look at other watercolor sets, this is a standard pigment that's used for black. There are different pigments um, for all ranges, but this is, this is an ivory black. So let's take a look. Let's see if I can get it nice and deep right here okay I'll add water yeah I like it I think with any of these pigments, if you wanted like a full, full strength pigment, I don't necessarily know if I would color with them. I would probably take a piece of it. There's, when you're looking at these pigments, you can see there's a perforation in here for that you can split it into four pieces. And I would actually, I'm probably gonna take a piece of each of these and stick them into either a half pan or a full pan. This is a full pan. This is a half, whoops. This is a half pan, and I actually, I had taken them out because I really like this little Winsor Newton tin, and I wanted to be able to see whether or not they would fit in here, and they would if I took this out, but then I don't know where I'm going to store my sticks, so, and I do have Daniel Smith sticks coming, so we'll see, we'll see, never know what I might end up doing with them, but I like this little tin, I like the Winsor Newton logo on it, it looks nice. All right, let's see if I put some water on there. I love watching granulation. And we go back into the black. There it is. Very black when you add water. Yeah, that would probably be the way that I would use these. I would add the water and then put the stick directly into the water or stick it in a pan where I can add water to them to activate them like a watercolor and use it directly from there rather than drawing with them. But this gives me a good idea of the range in the Winsor Newton line, I think. And okay, let me try something completely new which I was so curious about. I've been looking at them and looking at them and trying different, trying different um, review videos. And there's not a lot of review videos on this product. They actually, they had quite a few negative reviews. And I think it's because the colors are so muted. But if you add water first and then you use them, and I also wanted them because 
I'm very interested in doing some encaustics and I have to wait till summertime till it's warm enough in my garage to be able to do those but when it is warm enough to do them uh, these might be something I'm going to try in some of my some of the encaustics that I'm going to try. And I just got my notification of my shipment today. I have some Daniel Smith sticks coming, so I was very excited about that. So, if you're curious about about these, definitely give them a try because for seventy dollars, like if you compare. This I got at Michael's, and I was so surprised. This is five mils. It's not a 15 mil tube. This was $17.99 at Michael's. The only reason why I bought it is because I had a 40% off coupon. And I was really shocked by the cost of that particular pigment. I just want to see if I take out this little thing here, if it will fit my half pans nice for a potential DIY travel palette. It has a hinge, which is always what I'm looking for. Uh, like this. Oh, let's take a look. Oh, those are together. Okay. And I prefer, oh yeah, that's nice and deep. And I prefer the large watercolor pans over the small. I find as I've been using the small, they're, they're hard on the tips of my brushes, and some of my watercolor brushes have gotten expensive. So I've been switching, slowly switching over to the full pans. There we go. Nice. All right. Well, this concludes today's video. Here is... Here is the swatch of the colors for any of you that are interested or who are art nerds like me and absolutely love color. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.